What stops most people? Chaos creates confusion. Any of you ever had a time in your life? Did you ever grow up? I, one of my favorite TV shows growing up was Get Smart. Love that show. And who was the enemy? Chaos. chaos with a K. And they were always fighting with chaos. Do you understand what chaos is? It's the mess that's created when you don't face issues. Now, you think that will create confusion? And what is confusion? It's when your mind and your emotion aren't certain what to do. So they're disconnected. And your mind says we can, your emotions go we can't. Now, when that's created, what happens? It creates conflict. Confusion creates conflict. Now I'm uncertain. And have you ever found in life that when you're uncertain, you're paralyzed? And when you're paralyzed, you're susceptible to getting knocked down. You're susceptible to getting the rug pulled out from under your life. But watch this. Conflict results in frustrations. You ever get frustrated? And when you're frustrated, does your attitude change? Do you become a different person? Why, you ever gotten so frustrated you wanted to run over them? And then put the car in reverse to make sure you got them? <laughs> but watch the last two. Frustrations result in disappointment. Folks, I challenge you to prove me wrong. 99% of every frustration you'll ever have in your life is because of a disappointment. How many times have you been frustrated because you're disappointed in someone? Hmm? And when you get disappointed, what's the result? You're angry. Now, I'm not talking about rage. I'm talking about anger. And can anger be a very powerful emotion? Yeah, can own you, can it not? You ever lived that screen? You ever been there? And can anger become something that just stays with you? And by the way, you ever had this happen? The person you were anger at, angry at, no longer in your life, but someone walks in with similar characteristics. And they've done nothing wrong. But do you think you ever transfer that anger because of what they remind you of? Do you think anger can knock you down? You think anger can pull the rug out from under your life so you can't see the positive? So back to it. One thing is true about life. The road you travel is never straight. Nor is it without curves, hills, detours, potholes, and all the other unexpected things that demand your full attention. When your attention wanders, a crash, and I promise you, a crash not only can, but a crash will happen. <coughs> your life, and it is your life, is always moving towards something. The challenge is many people don't know what that something is. You ever had a time in your life when you were lost? You just weren't sure. And reality is, you choose one of two things. You choose to either live each day lasting and frustrating existence or living in fulfilling experiences. Your choice creates the quality of the life that you have. Not the situation, not the event, but the quality of your life. The type of life you have is the result of your choices. So, what are life's choices about? Confusion or clarity? Havoc or healthy decisions? Obstacles or order? Investment in the negative or the positive? Collisions or calmness? Emotional reactions or emotional stability? Sameness or solid growth? And that's all your choices can be about. That's it. So, all lives have a direction. You know, people tell me, I'm tired of standing still in my life. You never stand still in life. It is humanly impossible 
The challenge is, who's defining the direction of your life? Please remember this. You don't lose control of your life, you give it away. When I'm fearful, when I'm doubtful, when I'm worried, when I don't trust me, when I don't believe in me, someone walks into my life, I give them my life. And then I become an actor in their play. And I'm no longer me. I'm whatever they want me to be. Do you know how many times in my life I gave my life to somebody else because I felt lost? I didn't know what to do. I didn't know where I was going. And until I got in touch with me, until I learned to trust me and believe in me, I was always an actor in someone else's play. But I woke up one day and I realized this. My life is not about me being a carbon copy. It's about me being the original. And I live every day from the inside out. I don't give control of my life away. And I promise you, there'll be people who walk into your life and when you're in one of your down moments, when one, you're in one of these times where you're not personally strong, your emotions give off a scent and they will know that and they will walk into your life. And if you're not careful, you give your life to them and it's no longer yours. Why? Because we're fearful. When you don't know where your life is headed, you're lost. What does that mean? You lack a clear direction. You get up every day and you hope this is going to be a good day. You get up every day and you hope something positive is going to happen. You get up every day, you plan your day, but you don't know where to start. You're lost. You orchestrate a crisis lifestyle. You ever been around someone who just moves from one problem to the next problem to the next problem? And if they have no problems, they'll create one? Because they don't know how to live without a problem? You're lost. You stare at what you perceive is wrong in your life. You're lost. They stop thinking and only react. Hear me. Most people don't think they think they think. Because you cannot react and think. It is humanly impossible. All lives have a direction. The challenge is, where is the direction taking you? Because direction does certain things for our life. It creates either detours, our direction involves feeling lost or following a plan, repeat or repairs, explains or educate direction, creates chaos or calmness, talks about or takes positive action, insists on excuses or accountability, obstructions or organizes, it notices or navigates through the terrain. With a planned direction. And folks, that's not an achievement. That's not a to-do list. Folks, that is not a to-do list. Because a to-do list is a form of procrastination. You ever put things on your to-do list that you didn't want to do? At the end of the day, you hadn't done it and you told somebody, can't believe I didn't do that. That's a lie. It was a choice. With a planned direction, your life has, had, has a calmness that allows you to manage the pace. What does that mean? I'm in control. See the path. What does that mean? I know the direction. And make adjustments. What does that mean? De adapt as the terrain changes. That must be made to keep your life doing what? Moving forward and not in circles. All lives have a direction. The challenge is paying attention to the road signs that are always there to direct you. What do the road signs look like? Stop. You ever had a time in life that you needed to stop and you just cruised through? You ever pulled up to a stop sign and didn't fully stop? And didn't notice that type of car that was behind you? Are there times in life when you and I need to stop? Because how many times have you not stopped and had a collision with yourself? What do the stop signs look like? Intersection ahead. What does that mean? It means that in front of me is a choice. And when I come to an intersection, it is a choice. And I got to know which way I'm going to turn. Get ready to yield. 
You ever had a time in your life when you needed to slow your life down and you needed to listen to somebody else and, and, and stop just being the person that you are who's just like a bull in a china closet? But you need to yield. You need to listen to people in your life. No passing zone. What does that mean? That you're in your life where you need to be at that time. Don't try to speed up. Don't try to choose a different direction. Be true to the course that you're on and then slow down. It's the hardest thing in life to slow down because if I can't slow down and I get the unexpected, I'm going to crash. The enemy you're facing is fear. Fear is always present. You'll never have a day you don't deal with fear. The needed understanding is, is the fear controlling you or are you controlling the fear? If fear controls me, I become an emotional mess. If I control the fear, my imagination opens up. Fear is a positive when you're controlling it. So how do you know if fear is controlling you? You find excuses not to face the issue. Been there. The experience starts an element of fright where fear turns from just an emotion to a behavior. Always looking over your shoulder. You ever been around somebody that keeps wondering when's the next shoe going to drop? Resist stepping outside your comfort zone. You understand, you were not put on this earth to stay in a comfort zone. You were put on this earth to trust yourself and find the adventure that challenges your life and keeps you moving forward. The biggest fears for most right now are the fear of the unknown and the fear of loss. You ever stood at the fear of the unknown? You doubted. You were worried. You were uncertain. And you knew you needed to do something. But that doubt, that worry, and that uncertainty controlled you. And because you couldn't predict the future or the unknown, you just stopped. What are the fears doing to people? Checklist. Unraveling them emotionally. What are they doing? They're reacting, not responding. Negative tape playing is increasing. They're going back to their world of pain. They're going back to their world of doubt, their world of worry, and they're stepping back into that world. What are fears doing to people? Keep them trapped in uncertainty. Two things that people want in their life, safety and security. And for most people, the unknown does not define that. Now in their life is not a happy time. And you know that because they keep talking about yesterday and all the good that was in yesterday because now's not just a happy moment in their life. The order to their life has been interrupted. I was doing just fine until this happened. I was doing just fine until the rug got pulled out from under me. I didn't need this in my life right now. Wondering when all this is going to end. I heard this so many times in the counseling room. Richard, when is this all going to stop? You know when it stops? When you take yesterday, turn it into a lesson rather than a point of pain. Nothing seems to make sense. It's all confusing. You ever stood in your life, looked in the mirror and told yourself, I just don't understand this. I don't know what to do. The greater these fears are within a person, the more they want to keep things the same. The greater the sameness, the more power those fears have over their life. Until you're willing to face your fears, you will be trapped in the circle of sameness that is designed by you to keep you moving away from improvement and deeper into your own self-depression. Most depression is not clinical. Only 3% of depression is clinical. 97% of all depression is personal. And folks, you hear me. A pill does not solve personal depression. You understand what personal depression is? It's when your mind and your emotions don't have a common agenda. 
which will result in your own self-destruction. Do you know how many people live every day destroying who they are, who they could be? Because they don't face their life with honesty. They don't deal with situations. They keep excusing. They keep justifying. They keep living in this world where there's no forward movement because they choose to stay the same. So what's personal depression? Your mind and your emotions disconnected through a lack of common agenda that connects them on a common journey. What's self-destruction? Behaviors you implement that beat your life down then rather than what? Build yourself up. I'm serious. Do you ever get down on yourself? And when you get down on yourself, isn't it hard to pick yourself back up? And isn't it amazing, when you're down on yourself and you're down there, there's a whole bunch of little maggots running around down there that are also been down there, and they come over and invite you to their self-depression party. And have you ever noticed when you're down on yourself, negative people seem to come out of the woodwork. You understand what true success is? It's getting up when life has knocked you down. So one more time. Until you're willing to face your fears, you will be trapped in the circle of sameness that is designed by you. Not situations, not events. Designed by you to keep you moving away from improvement and deeper into your own self-depression, which will result in your own self-destruction. For you and I to tackle fears, what do we have to do? Trust in yourself? That's big. Admit your fears exist? That's challenging. Calm your life down with pace? Slow yourself down when the fears are speeding you up? Do you know how challenging that is? Keep clear on what you want for your life. Don't let other people plan your life. Don't become an actor in someone else's play. Look around and find the positive support. And folks, I'm serious. You don't keep anyone in your life who's not part of your fan club. And I don't care who they are. You don't keep anyone in your life who's not part of your fan club because people who aren't supportive are critics. And critics are there to pull the rug out from under you. Expect good things to happen. People ask me all the time, do you ever have a bad day? I can honestly tell you, no. See, I figure if you wake up in the morning, it's got to be a good day. And if you don't wake up, it doesn't matter. <laughs> the human spirit is resilient. It can bounce back and walk away with a greater sense of personal strength and clarity that is a clearly defined pathway. So, I want to show you the process that I used for my life to bounce back from my childhood and to get up. And I still use this process every day of my life to keep me personally strong and to keep me moving forward and not in circles. It's not a magical formula. But if you ever go through a time in life when the rug is pulled out and you're down there and you want to get back up, there's a process to getting back up. Watch this. You must believe in yourself. How many times do you doubt yourself? And can you doubt without worrying? No, it's humanly impossible. Can you doubt yourself and worry without dealing with uncertainty? Humanly impossible. So I have to believe in me. And how do I do that? If you don't believe in you, you won't trust the decisions you make, which will only weaken you more. So what does believing in you require? Being honest with yourself. I ask people all the time, when are you going to stop playing games? When are you going to stop running from what you need to face? When are, you going to meet, when are you going to admit, I don't believe in me, I don't trust me? Because you've got to face what is before you can ever step forward. A sense of respect for yourself. 
Do you understand that every time you waste time, you're disrespecting yourself? You understand every time you procrastinate, you're disrespecting yourself? You understand every time you don't do what you know you need to do, you're disrespecting yourself. And if I'm going to believe in me, I got to have a sense of respect for me. I got to treat myself with value. Confidence in your talents. See, when I'm in a situation where I don't trust me, I don't believe in me. And I'll doubt whatever I'm doing in my life. I'll doubt wherever I am in my life. I've got to have confidence in me. I've got to know who I am. I've got to believe that I can. And when I believe that I can and I lay that foundation, worry, doubt, and uncertainty cannot control me. But when that cracks, it will control you. Kindness towards yourself. Don't be too tough on you. Because every time you're tough on you, you give people the right to jump in and punch you also. So it all starts with the most important foundation. I have to believe in me. Number two, open yourself to taking the necessary risk. Until you're willing to step outside your comfort zone, you will exist in a world of continual sameness. And I promise you something. If I came to your life and I spent a day in your life, I would show you that most of you take conditional risk. You only risk it when you can predict the outcome. But a risk is what? Trusting yourself enough to stand on the edge of the unknown and feel within yourself, this is the right path for me, this is the right thing for me, and I'm going to step out there in trust and in faith and belief. I'm going to step into that unknown and I'm going to turn it into the adventure that will pull my life forward. And fear, you're not going to own me anymore. So, hoping to take in a risk requires what? Believing there's more to your life. You have any idea how many times I've sat with people and heard this? I guess this is what my life was meant to be. And I look at them and go, no, this is what you've chosen for your life. Your life was never meant to stand still. Your life was never meant to be depressing. Your life was never meant for you to get down. It's all your choice. And I've got to believe there's more to my life than this moment. Taking a risk requires what? A willingness to adjust your life. You ever been somewhere where you knew you shouldn't be and had to make an adjustment? And are adjustments always easy? How many times to make the adjustment have you had to step through the fear that played the what if game with you? And how dangerous is what if? Because what if is the justification to stay the same? Continue in your personal growth journey. Here's a challenge for most of you. You have no time in your life for growth. I would bet you my life is as busy as yours. I'll bet you my days are as packed as your days. I still write for two hours every single morning of my life. Now, granted, I don't sleep like most of you. My sleeping time is generally midnight to about four. And I write for two hours every morning. And I, 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 I listen to CDs. I even listen to my own and think, that guy's good. <laughs> because I know something. If I'm not feeding my mind, I'm strengthening my emotions. And if I'm living from my emotions up and not my mind down, I'm a mess. Keen sense of opportunities. Do you understand if you're living from your emotions up, you don't see opportunities. Opportunities is your mind in a creative step, seeing a pathway to improvement by where you are. To get back up, to bounce back. Unravel all the emotions you have gathered and stored. Listen to this carefully because it's important. 
The more control your emotions have over you, the more you resist what you know you should be doing. How many times have you let yourself be less because of the fact you gathered emotions you didn't confront them? And anything you don't confront has continuation in your life. So what does unraveling emotions require? Being aware of your emotional challenges. What's unraveling me right now? What's causing me to worry? What's causing me to doubt? What's pulling the rug out from under me? What's keeping me from going forward with my life? Because that's what I want. Attitude adjustment. Ever needed to adjust your attitude? Is it easier to make an attitude adjustment? Most of us get locked into an attitude because of fear, because of uncertainty. And we're so stuck in what could happen that we don't face what can be. If I just go inside my head, let my mind be creative, let it control my emotions and step forward with, with the truth and with faith in myself. Clarity stronger than confusion. You're going to think I'm joking, but I'm not. Listen, I'm about to tell you. You can break life down to one question. Before you say yes to anything in life, take a deep breath because that slows you down. And ask yourself this question. Is this decision going to feed my confusion or strengthen my clarity? You understand, that's the only two directional choices you have. Is what I'm about to do with my life, is it going to feed my confusion? Is it going to make my confusion bigger in my life? Or is it going to strengthen my clarity and give me the trust to go forward? And don't make any decision without putting it to that question. Unraveling emotions. Keep yourself focused on what can, what can be. If I trust myself, if I believe in myself, if I step forward, what can I do with my life? I'm going to tell you something. I'm proud of what I've done with my life. I could have been all about, uh, like a lot of people who took their yester yesterday and used it as their means of self-destruction. I could have jumped off that ledge. That was an option. But I chose not to. You understand that in life there are many types of ledges to jump off of. And every time you jump, you destroy you. But every time you trust and believe in you, and you know and believe what you can do, you go forward. To bounce back, to get up. Never stop learning. When you stop learning, you only have your emotional yesterday to draw from. Now, is there a commitment in continuing to learn? You ever gone to an educational program, sat there, heard something? You knew. You knew you were here that day to hear that. You knew you needed that. And you walked out, and before you got out of the parking lot, you talked yourself out of it. <laughs> huh? Do you know that that's probably 97% of all people? I get us all the time. Richard, what percentage of people do you think ever use anything you teach? 2%. You understand something? It's not because you don't want to improve. You're fearful of the steps it's going to take. Continuing learning requires what? A big picture of what must be done. In the segment I'm going to do later on the power of being organized, I'm going to tell you, I don't believe in goal setting. I think most of what you call a goal is a hallucination. You know what we've taught you to do? Write a goal. You ever sat in there and you've written a goal and you couldn't figure out what to do with it? You ever given up on a goal that you've written? Here's the reason why. Goal setting does not work that way. What is goal setting? It's having a picture of what you want. Having the result you want to achieve. And then what? Asking the question, what behaviors do I need to implement to get me there? 
It's not about words. It's about behavior. Here's where I am. Here's where I want to go. Now, what behaviors do I have to implement? Because if you don't implement the right behaviors, you're going to keep getting knocked down and frustrated and disappointed and angry at what's not happening in your life. Continual learning. A disciplined commitment. You ask me, Richard, what is the most important skill I need to have in my life? Discipline. Which if I had a day with you, just you and I one on one, I bet that to 97 percent of you, I could prove you lack discipline in your life. That's why you're a mess. You get excited about something. It doesn't go in the direction you want it to go. So you just throw it aside and go on to something else. Discipline means I take it to the point of lesson. Continual learning. Continual searching. What is about me I need to, where do I need to improve? What is about me I need to learn? I need to learn about me. Keep an open mind. Do you know how challenging that is sometimes? You know why? Because the older we get, the more conservative we become. The older we get, the less risk we're willing to take. The older we get, the more we resist change. And when we do that, our mind shuts down. Our creativeness diminishes. To bounce back, to get back up. Consistently strive to be persistent with your journey. You must have a design for growth that is stronger than your fear of what if. How many times do you play the what if game? And I'm serious. You have this conversation with yourself. I want this. I want to achieve this. But, 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 what if? And do you know what what if does? It sucks the passion out of you for doing it. Consistent persistency requires what? Believing this is the right journey for you. People ask me, how do you know when you're in the right place in your life? You get three things you don't get any other place in your life. When you're on the right path, when you're in the right relationship, when you're in the right space in your life, it gives you happiness. What's happiness? Peace with yourself. Fulfillment. I'm learning from this. And then freedom. There's no chains on me. Agenda management. When you are consistently persistent, you can manage your agenda. The crusade that you're passionate about. You think I enjoy what I do? I mean, why, if I didn't, why would I do this 200 times a year? I mean, I do partly because where else could I go to meet as many weird people as I meet? <laughs> I've said that when, just, when this becomes a job, I quit. I quit. Keeping a pace you can manage. How important is pace? It's the most challenging thing that I teach people every day of my life. I take on five people a year and I am their mentor for one year of their life. It takes me basically five months to slow people down mentally and emotionally. The faster you move mentally and emotionally, the bigger mess your life is going to be. Then the last one. Examine it and be willing to pay the price for your dream. As long as the price tag is acceptable, there will always be growth for you to build on. Is there a price tag for what you want for your life? Yes, there is. For everything you want in your life, there's a price tag. And, and you only go as far as the price tag you're willing to pay. People think my life is so glamorous because I get to travel all over this world and they pay me to do it. Folks, what's glamorous about every night sleeping in a hotel bed someone else has already slept in? And I get nervous about these hotels that have gone green because I know what that means. They just let it grow. <laughs> and then they change the sheets. 35 years I've been doing this. You know that I have been in 30 actual hotel fires? I didn't start any of them. I have been on 19 airplanes where someone has physically died on the airplane. Twice they were seated next to me and I wasn't even talking to them. I've been in earthquakes. I've been in floods. I've been in tornadoes. 
You think there's not a price tag to this? You think there's not a price tag to life? You think there's not a price tag to a marriage? You think there's not a price tag to a career? And don't you understand when you're no longer willing to pay the price, the rug gets pulled out. A willingness to pay the price requires what? Base camp mentality. I've always got to have that place in my life where I know I believe and trust in myself. And when I'm worrying, when I'm doubting, when I'm in certainty, I go back to base camp. I rediscover what it is that I love about me, why I trust me, and why I believe in me. A clear sense of confidence. When your confidence is weak, so are you. When your confidence is weak, every situation you walk into will be less than what it could have been in your life. Crusade commitment. What I do with my life is a crusade. What does that mean? It means I know I'm at the right place in my life. I know I'm doing with my life exactly what God put me on this earth to do. I know that there's 2% of people out there who will listen to me and will move forward with their life. And the other people I used to worry about. I don't worry anymore. All I look for is the 2%. And the rest of them, I just dust the dirt off my shoes and I just move on. Because I'm not going to sit there and try to convince somebody of what they want because that just drains you. Knowledge. I don't want to get up tomorrow being the same person I was today. And to do that, what does that mean? I have to gather knowledge. What is knowledge? It's taking the experiences of life, finding the lessons that are in them, and implementing them to improve my behavior. That's where knowledge comes from. I don't want to be the same me tomorrow. Bouncing back is not about springing forward. It's about establishing a manageable pace controlled by a persistent presence designed to move forward rather than simply standing and looking toward and talking about to tomorrow, I hope I have. So, here's my last thought to you. Every day you make the choice. And if you don't hear anything, you understand this. Your life is the result of your choice. Not the situations, not the events, it's your choice. Every day you make the choice that creates your day. And that choice is going to take you in one of two directions. You either choose to last in frustrating existence. I'd sure hate to live that way. I'd sure hate to get up every day and look around and be frustrated with my life. Or I choose to live in fulfilling experiences. Why? Because your choice creates the life you have. Now, listen to my last statement. You shut everybody else out. You are exactly in your life where you want to be. People argue with me over that. But you are exactly in your life where you want to be. So, if I don't want to be there, I have a choice, don't I? I can stay down there, or what can I do? I can get up. I can pick myself up and not let the situations of life define who I am, but know that it's my choice. And every day, I have the right to be better. I have the right to be smarter. I have the right to be taller. And what does that mean? I have the right to create a presence that has a positive presence when I'm not there. My goodness, I'd hate to be somebody that when someone meets me, they can't wait to forget me. You've had those people in your life, haven't you? Why? Because life has knocked them down. And rather than get back up, they've chosen to stay there. 
You see them every day. And how do you know who they are? Because of their behavior. And what's the truth about behavior? Behavior never lies. So that's this program in our Power to Be series. The power to get back 